Rudo, let me start with you. Uh, you have Southern African heritage. What kinds of guys are you attracted to? These people are really about to educate a whole show to this question. I'm attracted to Caucasian men. Why? I don't have a rational explanation. Because you don't necessarily need one. As to why, I just am. And, exclusively? Uh, yes, exclusive. Come around, Mike, come on. Really? I've certainly been on dates with people of different um, races, but I've just found that I had a um, better connection with people of Caucasian heritage. What appeals to you about them? I think I like the contrast, the difference in skin tone. The, I like the contrast too, baby. The ebony and the ivory. I ebony and ivory, living in perfect harmony. Ooh. I quite like the contrast. <laughs> Go off, yeah. <laughs> Or is it a mixture of a whole lot of it's, things? It's a mixture of a whole lot of things. It's not just physical and it's not just sexual. I think personality-wise as well. Over here looking like, but why now, my sister, why? Well, certain interests and things, I just tend to find that I connect better with Caucasian men. Now, you're married to a white Australian man. Yes, I am. And you've never dated an African man? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, Linda, what about you? Um, who do you date? Uh, my preference? Yeah. Uh, what do you think she's going to see? Uh, yeah. would be for dark men. Ah, I see what they're doing, showing us the two opposite sides. Um, African men, predominantly, is probably where I'm sort of more drawn to. And, and what are you drawn to? Brother is back and he's like, yeah, we still got a chance up in this thing. About African men. Um, I'd have to say, I, I like the, the skin tone too, you know. Um, but <laughs> Mike, what about you? You have a Croatian, Irish, Scottish background. Who yeah, you, that's right. Who do you prefer to date? Uh, I prefer to date black women. So, uh, mm, what a twist. Bet you didn't see that one coming. I'm from all around the world, you know, um, any kind of culture. Would you look at other, other races or I, just I have black dated women? Out, uh, I have dated, uh, you know, white, uh, white girls, uh, mainly because in my area in Western Australia, you didn't really have that kind of option, uh, especially around in my area around near the coast. But now that uh, things are changing, demographics are changing uh, around Australia, it's really uh, great to see, you know, that kind of thing happening. And so, when, more... so when did this attraction start for you? How did it start? You know what's really really interesting when I think about myself this preference has changed as the years went on and especially when younger it's more influenced by what you see people that you know close to you that are maybe in interracial relationships and you see it work and you're like oh okay so I could date somebody potentially from that race or it's literally things like TV shows and you see very attractive people from other races or interracial relationships on the TV screen. And when you're younger, you're like, oh, okay. It changes. And when you grow up, it changes a lot more. Um, probably when I was quite young, I used to read a lot of books about uh, missionaries and stories of Africa and things like that. And that just kind of uh, got me interested. Um, probably American movies as well. Uh, and TV shows as well. Which um, TV show? There's one uh, in particular. Okay, it's The Cosby Show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Mm. Uh, she just seems to, she was just like, like genuine class. <laughs> and like everybody else is like, Bill Cosby's really funny. But when I watched the TV show, Felicia Rashad really kind of stood out to me. And uh, yeah, and the other one is Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. So, okay. okay. Whoopi Goldberg with a gun. What movie is this? What photo shoot is this? He had quite limited English when we first met, but actually uh, he was able to convey his personality and sense of humor really clearly, despite his language limitation. Had you dated other Korean men before, huh? Yes, I had. Okay, so had it been a preference for a long time or? We actually met at a pub. Is it an instant attraction or Yes, not? like when I saw her and uh, she was in, um, she was wearing a like beautiful dress. It was like vintage dress and I, I thought, Wow, she's beautiful. Ah, listen up here. All you minimalist people, I'm one of them. I don't got rid of a lot of clothes, a lot of things, and now I don't have a lot. If this guy remembers that the day he met this chick and we're in a bar, probably drinking, she had on a vintage dress and that made her look, you know, it made her stand out from the crowd, look extra beautiful. We gotta watch it. We gotta watch it.
We gotta make sure we don't just rock up to places looking anyhow. Because these men, they be having their eyes on things. They they be looking. They look and they see things. Just like how us women see things. Nothing goes unnoticed. Just know that you don't go unnoticed. It's important how you carry yourself, how you present yourself. Maybe I could see her in a movie or something. And But I thought, oh well, but I'm Asian. Uh, probably she's not interested Asian guy. So uh, I just found a, a word, what I want it in English, in English dictionary. And I showed her, oh, I want to eat this. Okay, and I just wonder Ooh. the extent, Sophie, to which the physical, the sexual attraction kept you going during that time when you didn't have any language. So I, I'm just interested in how big the physical attraction was. Mm -hmm. Bet you regret coming to this show now. This is why some of these cho shows are really trifling. You go and stand there and be asking all these personal questions for what? What, what does that do? What is that proof? What is this even supposed to show us? Of you? Ah, because of that warm humor, because of the good personality, uh, I did find Han very handsome, very attractive person. Ida, you've been in Australia since you were four. Yep. Is that right? That's and right. you went to an all-white school. Yeah, I did. And you've never dated a white man. I never have. Okay, so proximity just hasn't come into it. I was going to say, I'm going to shoot the exposure theory out. Oh, ho. that's all fine and dandy, but let's not forget that exposure theory probably still counts. The real question is, what have you been exposed to, my sister? What were you exposed to in that school? Maybe it wasn't what you preferred at the time or ever. Keep that in mind. Because I've been exposed. I obviously had um, lived here all my life. My preference is for um, Caucasian white Australian male. And um, I'm from a migrant background, so I immigrated quite young. You're told very quickly, you've got to, um, you know, you've got to work twice as hard. You've got to be, you know, twice as good. You know, it's business West is best mentality. And even just the physical value of beauty, even though they don't, my, you know, my parents would never say, oh, being white is beautiful. It'd be things like, get out of the sun, you're getting darker. And, you know, and that sort of mentality, that actually is more of a classist thing because for a lot of Asian people, being dark skinned, is actually associated with working labor class. So but that affects who you're attracted to? Yes. Yeah. Ah, we forgot another thing. Obviously, the way people are brought up and what they are taught can definitely taint color influence their preference just as well. In my youth, would have interpreted that as get out of the sun, you're getting darker, darker is ugly. Is there any evidence that race in, in itself is a driver for people's no. attrac attraction to other people? In general, no. And in fact, even people who claim that they prefer X or, or don't prefer it often find that, you know, life throws them a curveball. They meet somebody that they actually are very attracted to who is a member of a different race and they, they didn't want this for themselves, but that's the way it goes. One of the stereotypes is, is that is, is that, that is banded around, well, do Asian women treat uh, Western men better than. Uh, a white woman might and the belief is is that yes that's true i believe that to be true mm, um that's right. just very much my own experience of, in what sort of way um very attentive very attentive yeah but really made okay so that was based on what your experience or of that one relationship or <coughs> my friend please cover your mouth <laughs> Yeah, that one relationship. Um, I see. That was just got to the point now in the United States that if every single black man and every single black woman that yo, but did you peep that look though? Were available, met up together, and and got partnered, there'd be 1.2 million black women who who wouldn't have a partner. Uh, oh, I knew it. I knew she was gonna let this slide. <laughs> okay, over here. Yes. Hi. I just wanted to comment on that. I think my preference is for black men. And that's simply because I don't want to be someone's fa fantasy or fetish. Oh, she took it there. She took it there. And I think for a lot of black women, the, the main thing is when men come up to you, they're dating you be solely because you're black. But you want someone who dates you because they like... <laughs> Ain't that true. Like who you are. Um, I would prefer to date a black man because I know it's about me more than it would be about going to Africa and being a missions trip or anything like that, so... She hit him with the, I said what I said and I'm sticking to it. Okay, Rudo, yeah? I, I think I'll disagree with that because that's also another stereotype because you're saying a black man's going to date you because you're also black. My husband had absolutely no preference for a black woman. He just wanted someone that he connected with and we met and we got on and we got married. Yeah. My question is then, are you not stereotyping Caucasian men by saying that you only date Caucasian men because they're less um, less patriarchal than African men? Is that not That's a stereotype not my only as well? reason for dating Caucasian men? Oh, um, it's just a question. Mm -hmm. Let's keep 
be cute now if you see this is why these shows it can get very heated you know these people were just living their lives they weren't really thinking much about what they were doing and who they were falling in love with and all the rest of it and now they've come to a show where they have to justify why it is that they pick the life partner that they pick and become pretty dangerous if you ask me i'm attracted to to caucasian men you know we live in a society full of choice why does somebody like dark chocolate instead of white chocolate <laughs> why does someone like milk chocolate instead of peppermint chocolate it's my preference you know i'm very proud to be black because I think there is this stereotype that if you prefer to date outside of your race you've got self-loathing mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some that do have that and that's why it's blown out of proportion right see stereotypes are always things that might be true to a certain degree to a certain percentage in a certain race but not always so you can't say that this goes for everybody and that's the thing that's the problem there will be people that date out of their race specifically because they're actually you know they have that self-loathing you know they don't they don't really love themselves that much or their heritage or their race and then there's people that just stumble upon love and that's it you know they don't seek out a certain race they're just open and they, they end up dating who they date eventually and marrying who they marry. I've got self-hatred issues. I don't. I'm very proud to be black. I'm proud of my African heritage. I just like what I like and that's all there is to it. I don't think I have to justify my choices to anyone. You see now, this lady is hitting the nail on the head. She does not have to justify herself to anyone. That's what I was talking about earlier. But I think the problem with this show is that they want these people to now justify why it is that they picked who they picked. That's what this is all boiling down to. Hey, you're right. You don't have to justify your choices but I think that's one of the things that if you're about to go into an interracial relationship you have to consider because society does judge they judge your mo the motives behind the two people that happen to be in love why are they together in the first place is it because someone's trying to get immigration papers or is it because someone's trying to you know sort of move up in, in, in society in terms of their social standings or whatever based on stereotypes of course yeah definitely because you've got to look at the cultural factors between when you get married I mean um, set of, some people would say Western culture is more individualistic. Where, where I'm from, it's not. It's very family orientated. I'm not against interracial dating. I am saying, though, that if it is based on a fantasy or an idea, you're not looking for a life partner. So that's, that's a big difference. You know, I like this woman. She's just like me. Maybe totally misunderstood. And if she doesn't tone it down enough, people will say she's aggressive and coming at them. But she's just trying to put a point across. And Sometimes we don't have to agree, we can agree to disagree, but at least hear my point, at least hear what I've got to say. Because this woman is articulate and she will be able to explain to you what she's thinking. So yeah, she's, yeah, I'm usually this chick, you know, I raise my hand and I got something to say. And <laughs> it's not to knock anybody, but it's like, yeah, you know, we're all given different, different abilities, different gifts, and some of us just, you know, you just want to say what you got to say, not just to put your own point across, but also just to see what other people will say, because sometimes these are things that are not really talked about openly. So you just want to see where people's head is at. You know, you can get a discussion going. So, yeah, I dig, sir. And what's your background? Where are you? I'm from Zimbabwe. Okay, and, and in terms of your dating preferences, what do you do? I generally am more inclined to date African men and that's simply because of my experience. If I met an Australian man who approached me and had a normal conversation. <laughs> this woman really said normal conversation. <laughs> that didn't involve some sort of stereotypical comment. I'm open to that. Have you but, been on the receiving end of those stories? Yeah, definitely. Oh my goodness. Y'all ain't know. The whole world knows this. Like, it goes both ways. Wherever you're from in this world, whether you're white, black, green, yellow, purple, orange, everybody's had these stereotypical comments made towards them before. Everybody. It's just human nature, unfortunately. Typical mm -hmm. comments Quite very, often. very often? Very often. And what especially are, what online. sort of stereotypes? Uh, comments like, oh, big black booty girl. I love that. Or, I finally got myself a Rihanna. And, oh, <laughs> wow. Well, I don't even look like her, but. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
So I have received those kind of comments. So that's where I'm, I guess I'm more wary. I'm kind of like, well, yeah, well, hmm, should I really go for that? Because my experiences in life have taught me ABC. And that's the thing. Anybody that you see that's kind of weary, that acts kind of funny regarding a certain topic, you need to ask yourself, what have these people been through that is making them this way? Because lived experiences will shape the way people just live their lives. Why are you here? Hmm. Have you had any of those stereotypes? Oh, that? I've had lots of stereotypes. Somebody actually asked me once, are you from Sudan? And, and you know, are you a refugee? And I, 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 was, I was utterly gobsmacked, because even if I was, what, you know, what does that have to do with anything? Well, that sure was interesting. And I guess I do understand the purpose of this episode on the show, because you get to see what different people are going through and why they came to actually choose the life partners that they chose in the end. So I guess it was quite insightful. Anyway, as always, make time for glorious life. And whatever you do, make sure you hit thumbs down as well as the subscribe button and hit the... Wow, that was a struggle. A notification bell whilst you're at it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.